Good morning, Connections. It's Thursday, November 19th, 2020. So glad you are here. So glad that you have uh, found the strength, the discipline to seek God daily before rushing out the door and charging into battle without your armor on, you have settled in. Seeking God's peace, seeking God's wisdom, seeking God's plan, and seeking God's protection. I am grateful God smiles upon you Let's get started. Well, put the slides in the wrong direction. Good morning. Let's go on to this slide first. Small group ministry. It's something that we spoke of six months ago, something I made reference to on Sunday, and something that I would like to see as we move into 2021, start being rooted in the way we do church in the future. Very important that we build trust within the church. And it's one of the things that we've recognized from day one is difficult to do. Being that so many of us live within close proximity to one another, trusting that what we share in confidence does not get broadcast to the large group is is hard. But what we hope to do is build smaller groups of four to six people and build accountability, build encouragement, and most importantly, build trust within those groups. Those groups will all have different themes. Some of the groups that already have uh, begun are, if you consider John's volunteer group uh, and Dave participating in that uh, along with John in in a way as well. But the volunteer groups, the, the Tuesday, Thursday group, people who just give of themselves and give of their time and their talent to help us get the, the facility finished. Now, to be a small group, that group needs to, to meet outside of those things or is part of those things and begin talking about their relationships with God and building a trust in that way as well. Whatever the small group will be in the future, they will have an activity that they are a part of, and then they they need to do the work uh, similar to what we're doing here in the devotion. Uh, the the leader will expect be expected to to draw attention to God and the importance of God in all of our activities. So the other activity that of course is going on now in a small group that has already formed and perhaps one that's been functioning for um, the last several years, is our our outreach, uh, our evangelism. I'd like to formalize that. Now, recently, because of uh, health concerns, we have had to put some restraints on our outreach, um, recognizing that we can't move as freely as we would like to move throughout our community, because inevitably we come back from our community and share everything that we've we've <laughs> contracted in the community uh, with our 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 family, with our our connections family. So we are being very careful, and Dave and I are taking a step back to look at where we feel that we can do outreach and evangelism safely, and then plan accordingly. But our small group certainly will be looking beyond that. We will be looking at a time when we will not be having the concerns of COVID-19 hanging over. And again, the most important component of that is that we're doing that outreach. And I always pair that with evangelism because you can do outreach all day long. But if it doesn't have the purpose of bringing people into right relationship with God, then it's a wasted effort. We truly want people to understand that what we are sharing, most importantly, is the love of Christ. 
and that he is the one providing any of the material goods that we perhaps hand out, the food that we provide, uh, the counsel that we provide, all comes from God. And the purpose of that is that God loves us and desires to see us home. So rooted in our outreach is always the God loves you message and he desires to be in, in relationship with you. So we want to see that expand. And then other ministries. Stu has a ministry that he would like to set up in, in the parking lot and um, sell merchandises, fundraisers, and also a way to meet our surrounding community, invite them to church. So there'll be an evangelism component there. Um, so if you have a small group idea, Denez has floated and is desiring to build a women's group, for instance, perhaps there's a, a men's group, perhaps there's a fishing group. Um, all of them are activities that bring people together. And then also we want to make sure that we are, are discipling, we are teaching people that all activities can bring glory and honor to God. So if you have a small group on your heart, if you would like to participate in a group of, say, four to six, I can almost see these small groups um, coming to the fore even as we move through the, um, you know, the timeline as it, it sets before us with the vaccine being offered um, and things getting back to normal by summer, perhaps by spring, we will see the small groups starting to meet at the church, having their, their fellowship time and then moving out from the church um, where we can provide at the facility kind of the, the launching pad, if you will. So small groups may come online before we are able to meet um, in a larger way at the new facility. So um, just a thought, wanna, wanna kind of encourage you forward in that and uh, uh, stay tuned. All right. Now, if you recall, the slide before this was talking about our daily devotion, which we are deep in Psalm 119 at this point. And we are emphasizing this pouring out our hearts, sending God a love letter. Um, one of the beautiful lessons from the entire book of Psalms is this intimate um, communication between ourselves and God. And of course, you know, ex the expectation is that we are hearing from God as well. So um, I didn't want to miss out on that, uh, you know, lesson of teaching us how to give voice, you know, our, our most inner thoughts and sharing them with God. And that's what Psalm 119 is a perfect example of. So that's why we've, we've camped here for a little while. And um, I think it's, it's bearing fruit. I think there's there's lots to discuss each and every time we get together, and that's why we are moving through Psalm 119. I'm going to continue that for next week, and then we'll evaluate and uh, take a look ahead. We'll be about halfway through uh, Psalm 119 by the end of next week, and we'll decide then if we want to continue to to uh, learn how to to express our love to God. Or we want to uh, you know, seek God in a, in a different way. But this week, we're going to round it out, uh, finish up strong here on Thursday and Friday, and looking forward to Sunday's uh, time together. So we are in 25 today, and I just want to read the highlighted part first, and then we will uh, circle back to the, the meat of it. But I am laid low in the dust. My soul is weary with sorrow. One of the most difficult things, even when we gather together to fellowship, even when we gather together uh, to, to, to seek God, is there are days when everybody else seems to, to be in sync with God and has found that joy and that peace and we're not getting it. Our life is much different. And the more people talk about uh, how God rescued them and God 
uh, provides for them and God uh, healed them. If we're not experiencing that, then resentment can build. So we have to be willing to, to monitor that. We have to be willing to not just put a, a brave face on and smile and say, yep, God is good. One of the things I appreciated about Jasmine on, on Sunday is that she shared with us a struggle midweek as she was seeking God for the songs to prepare for, for Sunday worship. And she just wasn't feeling it. Now, we have a pretty deep library at this point of of music that we can share and we're, since we're we're limiting our our worship to to three songs jasmine certainly has the experience um, and the expertise to pick three songs and uh you know be done with it but jasmine truly sees every week as an opportunity to draw nearer to god and to 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 seek him and and invite him into our sanctuary and she doesn't want to miss out on that so she has a lot of work to do just as i do each week as i press in because i certainly uh, have enough experience to you know preach a word without it being a message from god but in order to be authentic in order to to truly accomplish what god is calling us to accomplish each sunday it takes getting right with God. And so it takes this working things out and willing to say, I'm just not feeling it. Now, the beautiful thing that we've been talking about is where do we go to seek the answer? And Psalm 119 is going to continue to beat that drum, seek the answer in God's word. When you're not feeling it, when you're not, uh, when everybody around you is, is lifting their hands and, and praising Jesus, and you're not feeling it, the place to seek answers is within God's Word, in that quiet place. Now, one of the things that we're going to read here in just a moment is that when you're not feeling it, to open your heart to God and allow him uh, to, to evaluate it, to, to uh, illustrate the places that you're hung up and, and the things that, that you're holding on to, perhaps, that are keeping you from, from experiencing the full joy of God. I am laid low in the dust. Preserve my life according to your word. I gave an account of my ways and you answered me. Teach me your decrees. Cause me to understand the ways of your precepts that I may meditate on your wonderful deeds. My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. So it sounds as the psalmist is doing the things that, that we know to do, not allowing that resentment to build up of why do they get such a, a wonderful relationship with God and I don't hear from him at all, but doing the work. And one of the things that we have to get accustomed to is as we begin this conversation with God and we, we give an accounting and God is invited in, we need to be prepared for the answers. I often say that one of the, the most uh, dramatic turns in my life came when, when I began to be able to hear from God. And as I explain how I knew it was God's voice versus my internal voice, is my internal voice always paints me as the hero. It's always someone else's fault. 
God's voice is much different. God's voice is the one that speaks correction, the one that that calls me out on on my my junk and often calls me to to be, you know to do the right thing even if I don't feel like doing the right thing asking for forgiveness, even if I didn't feel I did anything wrong. Loving on those that are very hard to love, loving on our our enemies. Those are the challenging words that come from God. And you need to be prepared for those as you seek God in his word. First step is giving him access and giving him an account. Second step is taking that evaluation and recognizing there are, there are things that, that need addressing. I had an opportunity to speak that during our fellowship time this past Sunday, that we truly sit down with God sometimes just like, just fix them, Lord. If you could just fix My girlfriend, if you could just fix my roommate, if you could just fix the staff at the Kearney, then my life would be amazing. The work needs to be done within us. Be prepared that God, when God responds, he's going to give you work that needs to be accomplished within you. Keep me from deceitful ways. Interesting that that works its way in during this expression of feeling, you know, just not, it's just not there today. Just don't, just don't have it. Everybody else is happy and I'm, I know I should be happy, but I'm not. I'm certain that you have noticed during the difficult times that oftentimes the, the, your old ways seem like the better ways. When everything is going right, when everything is, you know, the uh, income is starting to come in, the the job is working out, um, I have purpose again. Man, that's that's easy to give glory to God and and wake up every day with a smile on your face. When you recognize the job is hard, the money's not as much as I could use. And I'm getting sick. Not so much. I know a shortcut. I know a way to to get ahead if I just do it my old way. That's why we need to allow God to evaluate and, and take his counsel and do it his way according to his word and remain on the path. And so that's why this belongs here, is because when we are fearing, feeling down and, and in the muck and not having a good day, that's when the devil's tapping on our shoulder saying, you know, there's a shortcut. Keep me from your deceit, keep me from your, keep me from deceitful ways. Be gracious to me and teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set my heart on your laws. I hold fast to your statues. Lord, do not let me be put to shame. I run in the path of your commands, for you have broadened my understanding. Seek answers in your relationship with God and he will provide 
understanding. I love being in relationship with God. I love being in relationship with you as you press forward in your relationship with God because there's this safety net that gets built around us. I don't want to shame you. I don't want to shame God. I don't want to shame Denez and my family. It holds me accountable. On the days that I'm not feeling it, on the days that I'm struggling, God reminds me to return to his word and seek him there, seek understanding. That's the beautiful thing about a church and being in relationship with one another. And that's why we are beginning and talking about small groups again. It's our family. It's our friends. It's our our loved ones who hold us accountable and keep us from taking those shortcuts. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to, to, to seek you today. I pray for all those that woke on the right side of the bed and are greeting today with joy and, and, uh, and peace and can't wait to get started. I ask, Lord, that you would resource them and bless them with an abundance so that they have, have much to share with the world. I also pray for those that are getting up and finding it very difficult to face another day. And the what the what's the point spirit is waiting for them before they even get a cup of coffee. I pray, Lord, that they would turn to you and your word and they would seek you and they would find you today. I ask, Lord, that you would place around them encouragers. People not there to, to flaunt their, their joy, but there because you have placed them there. Perhaps not even with a word, just Just being there. Lord, we are grateful that there are more sunny days than cloudy days. We're even more grateful, Lord, that you promise that whatever the weather, you are always there. For those that are experiencing a storm, we ask, Lord, that it would pass quickly and the sun would return. Pour out your blessings upon us in an abundance. Give us words of wisdom and guidance and place around us people who hold us in place as you hold us in place. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. Take a big swing today. God loves you. And he desires for you to find peace and joy. Know that I love you and miss you. And I will see you Sunday. But until then, be good. Thank you.